Hello, I'm Jason. Welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor. We're going to continue working with redox reactions, learning how to balance them using the ion-electron method. And so what we're going to do is jump into another example here, continue to get your, uh, your knowledge and your experience and your skills up there. And then as we march through more and more problems, we'll get into more and more complicated guys. And as you do these things, you'll see there's a method to it. And so the, the trick is just to get that method and get the hang of it so that you're not you know, flailing around whenever you're on a test. So what if I have the uh, reaction, aluminum plus copper ion, which has a charge of plus two, and that's an aqueous solution. So let me write aqueous here. And what I get on the other side is aluminum ions in aqueous solution plus copper, which is a solid. So this is a chemical reaction, and this is a redox reaction, and you can tell it's a redox reaction because you have all these charges everywhere. I mean, the only way that you're going to get charges before and after is if you have electron transfer. And we talked about the fact that oxidation and reduction is basically a, a electron transfer. So in this case, we have aluminum that loses three electrons, becomes an ion, and we have copper, which is an ion on this side, and it must be gaining some electrons to become a neutral atom on this side. But if you didn't know anything about redox, you would look at this and say, oh, it's balanced already. What's the problem? You've got one aluminum and one aluminum and one copper and one copper. I'm done. So a lot of students that look at this on a test and, and they get confused. They're like, what's the, what's the deal? Well, even though the elements appear to be balanced, there is electron transfer that's going on and that's not balanced. So that means that these coefficients of one that are everywhere, they're not what's really going to happen because the real stoichiometric coefficients that are really, you know, that you would see if you measured this thing, they're going to be balanced based on the electron transfer and the mass balance of all the elements. So step one, I don't know if you remember from last time, let me go ahead and write this down like this. Let's do step one is the half reactions. And when we write our half reactions down, we want to obviously have the electrons in there, but we want to also balance the elements. So when we write the half reactions down, we want to have the electrons in there and we want to balance the actual elements that are there. So in this case, we have um, aluminum uh, giving us aluminum plus three electrons. Now in this case, the element is balanced. The aluminum element is already balanced because it was actually already balanced up there. And we, the three electrons comes from the previous problem when we had three electrons there to give us this ion. Now let's look at the copper. We start with copper, right? And 